member. Thank you very much, uh, Chairperson. I just want to say that we will never be apologetic for speaking to the public. I know the ANC is not a very transparent party, and, yes, and, and, and thus they will report members of the Ethics Committee reporting back to the public. The new idea remains exactly what it has been created to be, an employment agency for the elite within the NC Youth League and its alliance partners. This is precisely why more than half of its budget is used for the for, not for the development of the lost generation, but on administration and employment costs. The ANC loves bloated bureaucracy like the NYDA. They love them because it gives them additional vehicles to do what this new ANC holds as its ultimate mandate, which is to distribute patronage. To do that, you must make sure that your cadres are deployed to be the arbiters of the patronage. Is why there are such fierce battles between ANC factions to get their grubby paws on these positions. It's not to rescue the lost generation or to care about the future of our youth. It is for the express purpose of buying allegiance with patronage for the next elective conference. Cry the beloved country, grieve the lost generation. And perfectly according to script, it is exactly what has happened with this appointment process. The time and money of Parliament was wa wasted as the factional battles played out. The first ad hoc committee, the one before this, rightly included the requirement of a post-secondary qualification as a criteria in order to be shortlisted. But they did this not because they believe, as we believe, that those on a board managing a budget of close to half a billion rand should be skilled to do so, but rather with the express purpose to exclude, to exclude a certain Kenny Morolong who doesn't have a tertiary qualification. Now, why would they be so desperate to exclude poor old Kenny? They were afraid that Mr. Zuma would appoint Kenny as the Boots Chair rather than Yarshin Pillay, who is the Young Communist League's chairperson and Mr. Minister Leiden Zimanda's chosen son. And they were afraid that Mr. Zuma would do this due to his lost fondness for the Communist League. And this then had to be corrected, and so the process which was flawed to begin with, was restarted, now without the criteria of a tertiary educa education so that we can include Kenny Molong. And so the process was geared to the new mandate of who must be on the board, never mind the 487 applicants, many of whom are young and incredibly talented and qualified South Africans who they did not even give a second look at, but rather each member of the committee was told that they must just shortlist and pick one applicant. So basically you sit there and you say, who do you want, who do you want, who do you want? And each politician picks their politically connected applicant. It is no wonder that the only two shortlisted candidates without a political membership card were those nominated by the Democratic Alliance. Essentially what they have told the lost generation through this process is that just like you need to know an ANC ward councillor to get an EPWP job or to be moved up a housing list. To get ahead, you must have a political sponsor here in Parliament rather than a qualification. Today, we are asked to consider these deployed cadres, all of whom hold senior political office and two of whom have no tertiary qualification. In fact, the most qualified shortlisted candidate, Siaduma, Siaduma Beniza, with two bachelor's degrees, an honours degree and a master's degree, was excluded because, according to Honourable Mpongi, he doesn't go to rallies. Of the seven, of the seven politically sponsored candidates recommended today, four are ANC Youth League NEC members, one a former ANC Youth League regi uh, regional leader, and one the chairperson of the Young Communist League. These recommendations are the slap a slap in the face to the lost generation of South Africa. It is an insult to the millions of unemployed and hopeless young South Africans. The day believes that in a fair order, society... Order, Chairperson. Order. Chairperson, is it, parliamenta is it parliamentary for Honorable Kasim to call the youth of this country lost generation? Let's check I think that you, must, you must rule on that one. Thank you. Let's, let's take that as a point of debate. Continue, Mr. Kasim. The DA believes in a fair society a youth, where a youth must be skilled, empowered, and employed based on their talent and hard work, not on who they know 
and what circumstances they are born into. The DA will never support this report and calls on other parties to do the right thing and reject the blatant cadre deployment. Thank you very much.